tax structures. We'll take a look at some common types of tax structures, some categories of taxation so that when we start to calculate taxes and we start to talk about taxes, we can group them into certain categories. Now these categories are going to be general type of categories, but any tax is going to have some component of these categories. So when we think about taxes and talk about taxes, we'll hear these terms and we'll start to want to be able to group these things into the terms. Taxes are not new. There's no new taxes. We might have different variations and combinations of different types of tax types, which we will consider here. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. The first is the progressive tax system. I list this first because this is the tax system that we will use in the federal income tax system. We use a progressive tax system as opposed to a flat or proportional tax. And that's going to be the tax that would probably come to mind if we were just to start to think about how would we make a tax system. The first tax system invented, if you're talking about an income tax, would be a flat tax. And then we have a regressive tax. And a regressive tax, we'll talk about the definition of it, but you'll often hear this term, and it could be defined in a couple different ways, but it basically means that the lower income portion is somehow being taxed more than upper income individuals in some way. We'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. First, let's take a look at the flat or proportional tax. The reason we'll start from this one is because this is how the tax code would naturally build. If you were naturally to create a tax code, you're saying, hey, I have a central government. We need to create a tax code. How are we going to do this? Well, how about we take however much people make and multiply it times kind of a flat tax. And if you think about uh, different types of rules or sometimes some people have rules of like giving to charity. How much should I give to charity? Well, we'll give a flat 10%. That's a similar kind of idea of a flat tax. If you just said, ah, if I make you know, $10, I'll take 10% of that. If I make $100,000, I'll take 10% of that. And obviously the amount will go up as income goes up with that flat rate. Same thing is going to be true with a flat or proportional tax. Higher income individuals with a flat tax would pay more because that same flat rate would be multiplied times the higher income and therefore more taxes would be paid. And people that make less money would then pay less because of course the the income times the flat rate would result in a lesser tax so this is the benefits of this tax is it's the most simplified type of income tax we can have it's really easy to calculate we just have one rate take up how much money you earn in in income multiply it times the flat tax the proportional tax and it is what it is it also naturally results in higher income individuals paying more and people that or less uh, have less income in paying less this is not the system we have in our federal income tax code because that's going to be a progressive tax a more complex tax but we do see the flat tax and we have to know about it because there's a, bo there's a whole different types of taxes and we have a tax like the fica taxes social security and medicare taxes are more of a flat tax to an extent meaning oftentimes the fica tax we're going to have a cap on it so it'll be flat. It'll be a flat tax, an easy calculation up to that cap. And then once the cap is hit, then uh, you'll pay no FICA taxes on that. And note that that's an example of this combination of taxes. Once we know these groups, then we got to look at the taxes and say, okay, how does this tax really fit in? It's nothing new. There is no new taxes. What they're doing is taking old taxes and kind of piecing them together. And the FICA taxes is basically a flat tax, but it has a cap on it. So it's so it stops being taxed at some point, but it's really easy to calculate to that point because you've got, say, if you earn 40,000 times the rate of 6.2%, you just multiply that out and that'll give you 2,480. Well, what if you make 100,000? Well, you multiply that times a flat rate, let's say it's 6.2% and you get uh, 6,200. So obviously, if you pay more, if you earn more money, you pay more taxes again up till you hit a cap. That's a different story. Why would that happen? That's a different story we could talk about later. But in terms of a flat tax, you could see that, of course, higher income results in higher tax because of the flat tax being applied to it. The progressive tax is what we actually use on the federal income tax system. And most people really do not understand what the progressive tax is, although we have some ideas of what the progressive tax is. We know that if we make more money, we're subject to a higher tax rate, for example, 
but exactly how that higher tax rate is calculated, most people don't fully understand. The tax calculation is very complex. Some people will argue that, that it, this is a really bad thing because it's hard to, to know exactly what your taxes will be without this calculation. And others argue it's not too bad because we have software that can kind of figure it out. But if you're trying to just think about what's going to be the effect on taxes, it's a lot more difficult with a progressive tax system than a flat tax system because you got to think about these tables. Where do we lie in these tables? And the misconception with these tables will often be that if, if we have a higher income, for example, then for if we have, for example, above uh, 157,500, but below 200,000, some people would think that we would just pay flat 32% on all of it. That's not how it works. We don't play a fat, flat 32%. What happens is we, we pay 10% on some of the money, 12% on some of the money, 22% on some of the money, 24% on some of the money. And then the last piece we pay 32% on. So just keep in mind when we're talking about a progressive tax, we're talking about a tax that will result in more being paid by uh, upper income individuals even more so than a flat tax, which would already kind of do that. It would be progressively more the case that as we earn more money, we pay more. But that doesn't just result because we have a higher flat rate that we apply. What happens is, for example, we have the, the first 9,525 of taxable income would be taxed, for example, at 10% under this table, under this progressive table. And then the tax, the money that we made from 9,525 up to 38,700, in between there, we'd have to tax that at 12%. You can imagine this calculation. It's not the easiest type of calculation. You know, we don't want to have to do this manually all the time, typically. And then, then the next 38,700 to 82,500, it's going to be taxed at 22. And then if 82,500 to 157,500 gets taxed at 24, and then so on and so forth. So when someone says, for example, that if they make another dollar, they make another dollar here over this 157,500, they're going to be taxed at 32%. That's true, but only that last dollar is going to be taxed at that higher rate. So just keep that in mind. It's not like the whole thing is going to now suddenly be taxed at the 32%. The next type of term we often hear is a regressive tax. And this is going to be thrown around all the time in any debate over tax. So you kind of have to know about it if you want to reasonably talk about taxes because you're going to hear it and one term of it you could say it's tax uh, rate decreases as the wage base increases meaning we could say it's the opposite of a progressive tax and that could happen for example if we take a look at the social security which is a fica tax you can make the argument that it's it's regressive in the in that it has a cap on it and then if you make more than that that much money you actually don't pay the, the rate goes away now, there's a reason for that, and people will argue both sides of why this is the case. And, and if you use the, the word regressive tax, then that has a, a certain kind of meaning to the debate, typically, on, on how that is going to be used. So I'm not here to, to debate Social Security, whether it should have a cap or how high the cap should be at this point. Just note that one definition of a regressive tax would be that the tax rate actually goes down as income goes up. That's not normal, however. Most of the time that doesn't happen and we still could use the term regressive. Regressive is going to be used anytime the, the, the idea or the thought is that the tax resulting in a larger percentage taken from low income earners. In other words, whatever system that people are going to argue or that may result in the low income earners paying more money than the high income earners, you're going to hear this term regressive. And so, for example, if you compare like a flat tax to a progressive tax, then you can say you can use relative terms kind of. This is a more, you know, they're, they're, if, you, if you're, you're going to argue, people might argue that the flat tax is more regressive because it doesn't accelerate the amount as your income goes up as much as the progressive tax to pay more as your income goes up. But it doesn't really fit this definition of a regressive tax because this first definition, because the, the rate's the same. It's not like you're going to pay less in terms of the rate of income you pay under a flat tax. But you'll still hear the term applied to it. And in essence, any kind of tax, if, if someone's against the tax, then they're going to apply this term regressive to it in some way. And one way you could do that with kind of like a flat tax is you could say, well, of their disposable income, 
much more of the disposable income over the necessities are going to taxes for low income individuals than high income individuals. So I'm, I'm not here to argue a flat tax or a progressive tax either way, just to note that when you hear this term regressive, you got to take it with a grain of salt and, and who is giving that term and really parse out what the meaning of it is. How is it being calculated? How is it being majored to call it regressive? But in general, what, it, what, they're, what they're saying, the argument is going to be whenever you hear this term is that the tax is unduly re, uh, costing the lower income individuals more than higher income individuals in some way. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.